Where are they? Can I, can I jump right into they, it? Yeah, jump they, right they, in, they please. Is, they is right Sorry. here. Oh, that is you because <laughs> Sorry, if, if you run a minute too late, I'll cut you off. <laughs> Well, um, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, thanks for thanks for doing this meeting. Um, this is always we, we enjoy these meetings coming and just kind of introducing our projects um, and and talking through it initially. Um, so, my name is Paul Lawler. I'm with oh sorry yeah no, they're coming a lot clearer. Yeah you don't okay mind. sorry no that's fine. Um, my name is Paul Lawler. I'm with Bowman Consulting Group, um, engineering firm here in Charlotte, um, and we are we're working with Circle K on this project. Um, they are looking to self-develop this project, um, so working with their internal real estate and construction um, team on this, who, who are they're, they're here in Charlotte as well. Um, so the the site that we are looking at um, is Unionville Indian Trail Road and Seacrest Shortcut Road, um, and so whole reason I'm here this evening is because of the uh, the zoning out there. Um, it is currently zoned single family, um, low density, um, and so we are looking to submit a um, rezoning, uh, conditional zoning application um, here in the near future um, on this project. Uh, so typical Circle K development, um, it's, it's going to be a new construction, um, 5,200 square foot building. Where did you say it was again? I'm sorry. You said um, Seacrest Shortcut in where? In Unionville Indian Trail Road. Yeah, the um, very end of Lake Park where you would cross over to, to get to the entrance of Ontario. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right where we right. live. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, the northwest corner of uh, Seacrest Shortcut Union. Where the shopping center was going to go there, wasn't there? No, no, no. Isn't that it? No, no. Um, the other side. Of the road. Other side. On the, the other side of the road where the, sh where the shopping center was going to go, right? Yeah, okay. Other, other, shop, other side of the shopping center. Mm -hmm. Other side of the shopping center. Okay. Right, here you go. So, d does that help? There you go. That, okay. That, you can I see you. it better up there, David. Huh? You can see it better up there. Yeah, but it's right there too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, there are three properties there, um, and it's it's a total of 3.4 acres, um, and so it, it'll be uh, an assemblage of those those three properties. Um, the uh, so right now, uh, let me try. So we, we do have three residential structures. So you have house right there, um, house right there, and then there's another house here in this uh, under this tree canopy um, and so those are the three properties uh, this slide shows a little better representation of, of those three um, so current zoning out there is single family as i mentioned earlier um, we are in the village center overlay district so we would be looking at that um, overlay district as as part of this project really no, no matter how how it would happen um, this also shows another another image of of the three properties and gives a little closer up um, of them. The adjacent properties um, are zoned, so we have general business on the southwest quadrant, um, so I think that's the, the property you were um, speaking to earlier. Um, and then we do have some residential uh, around uh, the, the properties, um, and there is actually some unincorporated Union County property uh, directly north and west of, of the proposed uh, location. Uh, looking at the comprehensive plan future land use out here, um, it is uh, slated for interchange mix, um, so supporting both residential and commercial um, out here. Uh, this is some uh, existing condition, um, so this is looking east on Unionville Indian Trail Road, um, and these are the, the two residential driveways right there and right here um, that will ultimately be uh, removed. Um, and this is another another picture looking south on Seacrest Shortcut Road, um, looking towards the intersection. Um, so th this is the, the the survey for the property that we've we've received. Um, this shows the the three three properties, um, which will eventually be combined. Um, happy to answer any questions on this uh, once we get a little further, um, if there are any. And then kind of moving into the, the structural improvements uh, for the project. Uh, this, this is a architectural rendering for um, the building. Uh, the materials out here that they're looking to use, um, the, the majority of it is a um, fiber cement board paneling system. Um, so it's your, those, the two tones of the, of the brown are, are that paneling system. And then um, we have some uh, stone veneer um, on, on the building as well. Uh, and here's uh, some side elevations of the building. Uh, and then looking into the canopy, um, 
this one gives a better representation of materials um, out here. So have the, the general uh, dispenser. Um, it'll be a single row canopy, um, so it won't be, won't be two dispensers stacked. It'll just be one single row. Um, and then you have on the column uh, wrapped with some uh, stone and uh, matching the building and then a painted column and your uh, kind of typical uh, uh, gas canopy uh, fascia uh, for the canopy. Um, and so here's, here's the site plan um, where we're at right now. We did uh, kind of re reach out initially. Um, this was back late last year just to get some initial feedback from staff on this. Um, and the, the first approach we, we took on this was, I, I guess, call it more a traditional um, layout for a convenience store with the canopy along the road and the building behind it. Um, staff, talking with staff, they kind of recommended, let's, let's flip this to see if um, bringing the building closer to the road and putting the canopy behind it, um, which is, is more in line with the, the village overlay district. Um, and so we looked at that, and, and, and honestly, it, it works great from a, from a traffic flow standpoint. Um, it works well with the, the access points, um, gets customers in conveniently um, and out safely. So um, we're, we are happy, and, and Circle K is happy with, with this layout um, where we are right now. Um, just to touch on a little, a few details. Uh, so building right here is facing the street, and going back to the, um, the elevations, uh, the the face the call it the the primary face for the building um, w w which is fronting um, Indian Trail Road is uh, is going to have uh, some material on there to to represent a front. Now there won't actually be a door um, on that front um, because that is the um, kind of like back of house, back where the coolers are um, and um, where their mop sinks are and, and, and that kind of area. Um, and so the, the main entrance will be kind of facing the, the, the canopy. Um, and just to touch a little more on some of the site-related um, items, do you have a dumpster enclosure um, that's over off here to the right? And then um, what's directly, call it north, northeast of the, the canopy, is, those are the uh, underground fuel storage tanks. So uh, the, those will be fully underground um, as they typically are. Um, and then there is a, is a uh, patio uh, to, the, to the west of the building uh, that has a sidewalk connecting to the existing sidewalk out there. Um, to touch on two, two items that we've kind of been working on this project since, since the beginning, uh, DOT, um, we've reached out with, to them uh, back when we initially reached out to staff just to get their initial feedback. Uh, this plan right here does, does incorporate what, what DOT um, provided in their initial feedback. So, they're looking for some restriping on um, Indian Trail Road uh, to to create that left left into the site, um, and then in addition on Indian Trail, we'd be looking at a right turn lane uh, with about 75 feet of storage. So you have a right turn lane in, and then some striping to uh, to get that left left turn lane into the site, um, and then on Seacrest Shortcut Road, uh, their their initial feedback there was that it would need to be a restricted access. And so we have a, showing a right in right out here um, with a raised concrete median and Seacrest shortcut to, uh, to restrict any left out or in movements. Um, so, so those are the, the access related items. Um, they, they are gonna require a traffic study. Um, and so talking with staff, that will be something we need to, to work on as part of this uh, rezoning uh, application. So we are, we are looking to do that uh, once, this, once this moves forward. Um, the, the other big item on here is, is sewer. Um, there, there is not gravity sewer available to this site. Uh, Union County has, they have two force main, um, two sewer force mains running along Unionville Indian Trail Road, but they will not allow private development to tie into it. Um, and so uh, the nearest uh, gravity sewer um, is, is quite a ways away. And so we are investigating a septic solution out here. Um, so we're running some some soil um, evaluations on that to see if see if this site can support um, a, a septic system. So um, that's that's really what I had to, to talk through. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, again, I appreciate the time. Um, look forward to working with you guys. Any questions? Uh, I just have a couple comments. You had me at convenience store. I was ready to say yeah. 
you know, I, I like the idea. I live near there. Do you, do you like the idea of that being there? I, I do. And um, uh, the biggest question I've, I've got is um, my daughter the other day said there was a Circle K gas, and I corrected her and said that Circle K is not a gas company. Um, am I right or am I wrong? Um, they, they do. They do have their own branded fuel. Um, well, see, she told me that, and therefore I was wrong, and I didn't really believe it. So, can, is that true? It, it is true that Circle K is a gas company. The, the, yeah, the, they do have have their branded gas that they um, supply to some of their stores now. Um, a, a lot of their stores do have um, agreements with with other. Other fuel providers like Shell and Sitco um, so that it's like have a Shell station, but it's a Circle K station, correct? Shell gas, but Circle K convenience yeah, that's store. That's what I was looking yeah. for. That's yeah. A, so I'm not wrong, right? I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> their main thing is convenience store. So yeah, there you go. It looks like a good location for a gas station, but. My question is, is this station actually going to have gas? Because I went to Circle K last week and they didn't have it. <laughs> I, I was afraid that might come up. <laughs> I just wonder if you're going to build it and actually have gas, you know, so I didn't know. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're, I, I think they're a performer. Is, but no, is it in... looks like a good design. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, comic routines? <laughs> no? Okay, good. Thank but you. I do oh, have one oh, Jerry, question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, since we have sewer here, can we put in septic? Is it? I didn't think we we could do that. Uh, you made Brandy stand up. How, I mean, really? Sorry. <laughs> Call them. That's okay. Good evening. Union County Environmental Health regulates that, so there's a lot around the, the land and how much you have, um, and our code dictates that all. Um, typically, with a lot of the developments we have especially for residential and the size of the lots, it's not feasible, so you normally don't see it. Um, it's a little disappointing that we're having to even consider that route, but, but it is an option. Um, and um, Councilmember Cohn can attest to um, even the ABC store is, is looking at that option as well. Does that help? I think the ABC store, hasn't it, hasn't it been, it's been passed? I mean, we, we, we can do it as far as I know. It's, it's Correct. I think they're still going to attempt to, to connect it to sewer, but it yeah. has been approved for septic. Yeah. Any question, Jerry? Yeah, it does. I mean, that's a question for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Take 12 minutes. Good evening. Welcome to the Indian Trail Town Council meeting for Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. This time... I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. You may be seated. At this time, are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? If there's no additions or deletions, I need a motion to approve the agenda as written. Mr. Morris has made the motion to approve as written. By show of hands, all in favor? The record showed the motion carries unanimously. That brings us to our presentations for this evening. Our first one is a new business presentation, if everyone can hear me. And it is uh, Kirshner Insurance Group. And uh, Joseph Kirshner is here representing. If you wish to come up to the podium. Mr. Kirshner, this is a time we welcome new businesses to town and give you a minute, minute and a half or so to Talk about your business, let us know where you're at, and we okay. welcome you to town. All right, perfect, I appreciate it. Am I able to take this off? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, well. 
All right, so my name's Joseph Kirchner. I actually own, um, with my wife, Kirchner Insurance Group, which is actually an all state agency. Um, we're right on 4017 Old Monroe Road, um, right here in Indian Trail. Um, we're kind of new to the community. We actually just opened up March 1st, um, but we do personal insurance, so auto, commercial, um, life insurance. Um, we're excited to be here, um, you know, network with anybody, you know, anybody in the community. Um, and we look forward to doing business with as many people as possible in the community. And where exactly are you located? Right about, it's uh, actually a residential home that was owned for commercial. It's right about two or three houses down from the Omega Coney Island restaurant on okay. Omen Railroad. It's that white building with the blue shutters outside. I know exactly. So it's been there about two years, but just took over uh, March 1st. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd like to welcome you. I appreciate it. And you. Uh, have you come forward as a, as a appreciation for coming to the Indian Trail. And on behalf of the council and people in the Indian Trail, we'd like to welcome you. Wish you many years of success and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, it. She wants to take a picture of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I have a comment. Sure. But before you leave, would you do um, um, the State Farm shingle for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. You know what? When, when she did the typo, at least it was Jared and not Jake. That's true. But I, like I said, I've been called much worse. So. Like it's, it's like a good neighbor, State Farm. Yeah. <laughs> There's too many jingles. Our second presentation is an agency donation request from the Sandbox, and Wendy Decker's here representing. If Wendy, if you can give a two-minute overview, and there you go. Absolutely, um, thank you. Um, good evening, thank you for giving me this opportunity to come tonight. My name is Wendy Becker, and I am with the Sandbox. Um, so the Sandbox is a local charity that partners with families whose children have not only cancer, but life altering, rare and terminal illnesses. And what we do is we serve our families through an individualized care program. Um, we get to know our families on a personal and a very intimate level, and we walk the journey with them. So what does all that mean? <laughs> it means um, when they need nursing hours, we find them. If they need a second med medical opinion, we get it. Um, they need a day out to force that diagnosis to take the back seat. We provide it, and that may be just for mom, maybe for the whole family, maybe just for dad, whoever. Um, we provide respite trips out of town, go to the beach, force that diagnosis to the back seat. Um, we provide fellowship opportunities for other moms to get together because they're in the same boat. Who best to learn from than somebody who's a few steps ahead of you in the journey? Or sometimes it's the siblings who need fellowship with other siblings who's in the same boat because that's a different lifestyle than a regular kid. Um, other things we do, we provide traveling expenses to our families when they need to go to Cincinnati, New York, Memphis, wherever to see whatever specialist for their diagnosis. We provide um, hotels, gas cards, food cards, whatever they need. Um, we provide home modifications when the diagnosis takes a turn. You now need um, bars in your showers, you need a raised toilet, you need whatever, a wall knocked out. We provide um, those services. We provide moving expenses. Your house is no longer a good fit for you. We provide a moving company to move you out of that into a new home. We provide home organization. You get a new diagnosis, slew of medical supplies. We have somebody come and organize it for you so that you can give the best care to your child. We have a cleaning services that um, when your child, the most people who use our cleaning service truthfully is the, is the people whose children pass away. That's the first thing they normally need is they need their house clean before people come over and bring food and whatever. They're so embarrassed of their house. So we, we do that as well. So anyway, we provide all these things plus more through relationships that we have with partners in the community, businesses, and individuals. Um, one thing I will say that makes us very different than other charities is we never leave the family. We're there forever. Um, I just talked about when a child passes, we just transition that family and we call them a hero family, but we still support them forever and ever. They never leave. We are not a one and done charity. We're more like a forever and you have to kick us out. We, we, don't, we don't leave. <laughs> so that's who we are. But I'm here tonight to request funds for an event specifically for our families who are in Indian Trail. We have, we have received several referrals from many of our partners who are in Indian Trail. And the language is always the same. I have this family and they need the
the sandbox. They need to be in the sandbox. So we would like to host a public picnic cookout in Indian Trail um, to invite, we would invite all of our families, but specifically we would be inviting our newer families that are located right here in Indian Trail. And we would have a fellowship type event, food, fellowship, games, entertainment, that type of thing. Um, we would give everybody a special gift when they leave with household supplies, cleaning stuff, those type of things. Um, and then for this event, we would like to partner with Lanty Performing Arts and um, welcome their students to come and be a mentor. We have learned with our history of events that peer-on-peer, -peer, um, it, it, peer-on-peer um, interaction produces engagement and fellowship better than anything else. So we, ha we would be bringing in those students to help with our new kids, make them feel welcome and loved. Um, and I think that's everything in a nutshell. So thank you for this opportunity and I just appreciate anything the council could do. Does the council have questions? I, I do. Um, okay. Where are you gonna have this? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure yet. I did do some research on the websites with the parks. I would wanna have a conversation with the park and rec department to say what is the best is a park the best place? If not, like I said, we are partnering with Lanty Performing Arts. They do have event space. We are also partners with um, Masterpiece Studios. They have space. Their space is actually side by side. Um, so that would be an option as well. We have several different things, but I haven't secured all that because, you know, it's, everything's kind of up in the air. How many people do you want, do you think, might come? Or That's a good question. Um, our current count, the new, we have received 11 referrals from Indian Trail residents, family, 11 families. That totals right around 50 people. If I invited other people, I would want to have around 100 to 150 people. Is it a, is it a money raising thing too, or is it just? Just a fellowship. I'm just requesting funds to help cover the hard cost of the day. I do have, have you got somebody to do that for you, the, the barbecue and? Mm -hmm. I have a chef who will come in, a private chef, who will come in and do the food. He's just asking us that we cover the hard cost of food. He's donating all of his time and all of his well, material. I, what I want to do is I want to donate your food personally. Oh, so, oh well, so wonderful. We'll, 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 That's wonderful. OK. okay. You, we'll talk. Okay, yeah, we'll talk. Now, I don't know what the other does, but I want to do that part. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. It's a great cause. Thank you. Any other questions? Marcus? No, sir. Mike? No. Jerry? No. Todd? Oh, got a did you say no? I thought I said. Um, it sounds like you help families in need, and I'm in the Lions Club, so if someone mm -hmm. needs glasses or my exams, the, the, they're in need. They will, they will provide it. Okay. If, you know, so if you get, if you tell, my number's on the town website. So okay. if any time someone you reach out, I can get you to the Lions Club. That's so awesome. if that's someone needs that. Because a lot of times when they are in need, they can usually, they, you know, glasses or whatever. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. And I think a lot of time, like Medicare or Medicaid, only pay for one glasses. So if a kid Correct. breaks it, Correct. Yeah, so that's and that that's a lot of what we get. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. Very Mr. Generous. McLaurin, what do we have left for the for this budget? I was, I'm going to ask Jim to comment. We're probably right at the empty mark, but if it's just a little bit over, we can do a budget amendment to address that. So, Jim, do you have that information? We we could we could find it in the budget if it's a priority of the board. Okay, since it's the end of the budget year, you're more than welcome to waive the meeting next meeting requirement. That's up to I do council. Thousand. What? You can make a motion. <clears throat> okay. Um, any, anybody have any objections to that? By the way, to, no. to I mean, I know the 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 standard procedure. Anybody have any objections to waiving it or? You know, sorry, just uh, just checking. That's okay. I already had that one handled. Thank you. <laughs> can I make the motion? Or you can make whatever receipt. motion you want. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I make a motion. We uh, donate a thousand dollars to the sandbox. Is there any objection? Uh, any conversation, Mr. Barber's made the motion to make a donation of one thousand dollars to the sandbox. By show of hands, all in favor? Thank you. Let the record show that was unanimous. Thank you. You have my card. Thank you very much. And you let me know where I can help you. I will. Thank you. When he's giving you stuff, get some for me, okay? When he's giving yeah. you stuff, get some for me, all right? Okay. From him. And get it from him? Yeah. 
Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. listen to him. Got if, <laughs> when, when, when your event takes place. Oh, I, I will send an invite to all of you. Thank you. You read my mind. Thank you. Thank you. I better be getting a lot more barbecue than <laughs> Oh, don't worry. I don't eat barbecue. <laughs> right. uh, next is another donation request from uh, Ms. Laney. Not an unfamiliar face here. Hello, my name is Grace Laney. I'm 14 years old, and I go to school at Portage Middle School. I am very involved in my community. I have my very own platform called Stuff with Love, and it's where I sit, where I used to sew pillows and donate them to animal shelters, but now I just sew pillows and donate them, and masks and teddy bears and donate them to people in need and other organizations. These are the pillows and teddy bears. I'm coming to you tonight to share a dream of mine. I would love to give life to a blessing box in our hometown of Indian Trail. I have seen that there is a great need for families in need of food and other items. I have a blessing box Facebook page and people have messaged me and I have met them at grocery stores and helped provide food. The Moser group has been very gracious in giving me a space at the Sun Valley Commons to plant a blessing box. I believe a blessing box will help our community. I will keep it stocked with food and essential needs. I, will tr I truly believe our community will rally in support of this great need. Thank you for your time tonight, and I am ready for your questions. Oh. Ebony. I can fill in the blanks. Where did she miss it? She's looking for $250 for yeah. the cost of the blessing box. Um, what was the total cost? Um, 250 for the seven. cost of it and then somebody to build it she's asking for 200 yes she is yeah so question um, how many of these do you have is this your like your second or is it you've had more than you said you had one in Sun Valley Entertainment Center yes I'm just asking for um, the money and the supplies to build it I have the place to build it understand but my question was um, is this your second or is it, or have you been doing this for a while no sir this is brand new good for you well yeah. I, I'd like to say it's a great cause you're a fine young lady and uh, I would like to uh, do the same thing we did uh, a minute ago for way to way to get in the boat on whether or not we can give her the $250 and, uh, and that would pretty much well clean us out for the year, is that correct? That plus some, but we can plus supplant some. it, yeah. yeah. But not a whole lot, but yes, we could accommodate that. Would you need some special instructions to move that in the budget, or that's, you'll just do that at your own, on your own? That will, be part, that will be part of a routine budget amendment that we do before the end of the year. Okay, so you're making a motion? Um, may I go? Oh, got a, some comments and a couple of questions. Um, all of the donations that we've made so far, these have been to groups who have been audited. Is this true or not? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, then the, the next thing was this box that's going to be put in Sun Valley Commons, I believe, is who's going to maintain that? Will that be the Moser folks? Um, that would be me. I would uh, restock it and all the things that would be accommodated with it. I think to clarify a little bit, mm -hmm. since she started this, I've spoken to some of the realtors that are at the Keller Williams to work out of that office, and they've agreed to be, to watch it, to make sure it's maintained, kept clean, kept up to par, help stock it, and keep it for the future. Um, so that addressed uh, two questions that I have, and the other, the other comment is that this is not the first time you've been here. Um, I recall you the last time, and you're just as impressive this time, being 14, being energetic, doing all the things you do for our community. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments or a motion? Well, I make a motion to waive the waste time. Okay. And you want to make the other 
And to give the $250. Okay. Mr. Cohen's made the motion to donate the $250 to Gracie and Stuffed with Love to get the supplies needed for the blessing box at Sun Valley Commons. By show of hands, all in favor? That would be unanimous. Now your other, you know, I'll say it for you. If anybody out there is good with tools, she'll need help following the instructions, putting it together, and getting it in the ground. Or knows a Boy Scout troop that needs a service project. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can't hold a nail and drive a hammer, so. <laughs> I can do one or the other. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to public comments. I will open. Wait, is that right? Public comments, yes. I will open the public comments and say thank you for your interest in communicating with the Indian Trail Town Board. Comments will be recorded and can be heard by on the internet. Please note the following rules when addressing the Indian Trail Town Council. One, each speaker has three minutes to speak to council. Two, please elect one speaker for groups whenever possible regarding the same message. Three, comments should be directly directed to all council members and not to specific individuals. Speakers are to remain respectful with reasonable standards of civility. Anonymous emails will not be read. Written public comments will be read for a, restrict, for a restricted period of 20 minutes then emails will be noted as opposing or supporting. Any grievances regarding staff should be communicated to the town manager or town attorney and not aired in this forum. Meeting facilitator may discontinue or disallow the speaker to continue if rules are violated. All documents provided will become town property and will be available to the public. That being said, Wendy, you've already spoken with the sandbox. Uh, uh, Patrick Chang. As always, it's good to see you, Patrick. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, gentlemen, ladies. Patrick Chang, 106 Pine Lake Drive. I come to you uh, this evening after um, my last attendance in January when this council adopted the uh, Juneteenth as a paid holiday for staff. And in following up on that, I think there's um, what I'm observing for the time I've lived in this town, a certain lack of follow through on that particular adoption and in moving forward. So I'm here today to, to talk about an area that I have a lot of um, expertise in, which is uh, diversity. And to say that in a town that has grown exponentially in the time that I've been here, and I'm sure the rest of you in this community have seen the same types of changes. But what I don't see is that change happening in our town hall. All right? I don't think there's a representation of the people that live here or the merchants that have come in here to do business with this town by the people who work for the town. And I can give you specific examples. For example, when, again, I first came and all of you know my wife. Uh, she's been a 14-year employee of this town, retiring this week, if you were not told. So when she first started, um, they used to get calls from builders or developers who were Spanish. And you need to know, again, that a large number of our present residents and business owners are of Spanish-speaking descent. My job at Porter Ridge High School was a Spanish teacher. So Roberta would call me to basically interpret for those merchants. I haven't seen any change in town hall since then. As a matter of fact, what we're witnessing is a decline in the number of people of color that are working at the town. And I'm going to bring this to the town's attention because this, I think, if you're all members of the credit union, you may receive this particular publication. On the cover are a number of individuals who are working with municipalities here in North Carolina. The very first woman on this cover is a friend of mine, and she was the cultural, multicultural coordinator for Mecklenburg County. She has now left and gone to California. But there is an organization that is here that I'd like to ask if anyone on the council or within the town itself has ever heard of GAR, G-A-R-E. 
and it stands for Government Alliance on Race and Equity. There's also a website called Race, let me get, I think it's allianceforrace.org. And the whole purpose of this organization working with municipalities is to make sure that these issues that I'm talking about get That's some it. prominence and some discussion. Thank you for your time. I have oh. much more that I could say, but I will adhere to the three-minute time. Thank you, Patrick. Lois Rogers. Good evening. My name is Dolores Rogers, and my husband and I have lived at 212 Park Road East and Indian Trail for over 50 years. I'm here tonight to address. That was the quickest three minutes. <laughs> that was a quick one, okay. I'm here tonight to address our mayor and town council about a potential safety hazard concerning a large tree on the corner of the property that faces Park Road East, which is the road that I live on. My concern is not only for myself, but for my family, friends, and neighbors who also use Park Road East to enter and exit onto Indian Trail Road South. Since they have been clearing this property, uh, they're getting ready to put another business there. The land uh, on the corner of Indian Trail uh, there is a tree that is leaning, and I do have pictures to show you if you would like to see those, uh, that is leaning toward Park Road East. And um, with my concern is that with that tree leaning, that it could potentially fall onto Park Road East, onto the power lines that go to our homes and businesses along that road, and also Cars are lined up. I don't know if you've ever been to Indian Trail or uh, Edna Love Park, but the uh, cars are packed, backed up trying to get out onto Indian, you know, to Indian Trail South. So uh, with that being said, I'm very concerned that if that tree falls during the summer when we have all the winds and the storms and the tornadoes and whatever we have, um, that it could cause that tree to fall on maybe, you know, a car that's waiting in line to get out that road. So um, I have called the uh, town hall you know, uh, about three times asking if someone could help me with this and they said that they would uh, give it you know, to someone else who might would be able to address it. But so far the tree's still standing but leaning and uh, I'm you know, still concerned that that tree may fall and injure some, you know, injure someone. That's my main concern. I'm not as worried about the power lines as I am about someone getting killed with that tree falling on it. And um, I'd appreciate if uh, Mr. Mayor and Town Council, if you would uh, consider looking into this and see if there's anything you can do. I don't know that there's anything you can do, but this is my only option. I don't know who to contact or where I should go from here. Thank Ms. McLaurin. you. Just a brief comment. Um, good to see you tonight, Ms. Rogers. Thank you for being here. I know Ms. Rogers has had some conversations with Adam about this. Adam may have a couple comments. As we understand, the tree has leaves on it. It appears to be healthy, but it is way off of our right of way. Um, I'm not sure how many feet, but right now we don't seem to have any jurisdiction unless there's some evidence that the tree is not healthy or in our right of way. So, Adam, do you have any thoughts? No, I mean, what, what um, Mike said is true. I mean, so we've gone out and looked at it. It is probably 100 feet or so off of the edge of the road. So our right away on Park Road is only back of ditch, so it's only about 20 feet. So we don't have any jurisdiction to go on the property and cut it down um, for any reason for that. It, it does, a, when you look at the tree, it looks like it could be leaning. I don't know if the tree grew leaning or if it's you know, that way now that we can see it more. And, and that's why I told you on the phone that I don't know that for sure because I don't, I've never seen the tree until they cleared the, the houses off the property. I've lived on that road, so I've yeah. seen it. Well, <laughs> I, one thing, if I could add one more comment, yeah. Mr. Mayor. 
I think one thing we probably could do as a courtesy is reach out to the owner to make them aware of that tree and ask them to, to take a look at it. Would it be possible, Hayden, to have our Union County Arborist take a quick peek at it? So we as the town cannot ask the arborist to do that. They as a drive-by. They, they don't work for the municipality. Okay. They would work for the resident. So the resident would have to call them to request that. Um, okay. Brandy looked like she had something to say. Thank you. I had no idea what she said. Yes. Through code enforcement, they can make contact with the property owner to, make, to see that something, if it needs to be done, can be done. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's the uh, last public speaker, but I'm going to speak for one quick minute because I've received a message. Um, I received a message while public comments was going in. Uh, Wendy for the sandbox. And uh, Dennis Moser would like to match the town's $1,000 gift to you. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure we can get you his contact information. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. He says it's a great cause and he's honored to help. Call me. Okay. Thank you. Don't thank me. It's not my money. <laughs> At this time, I'll close the public comments. Does council have any feedback to any public comments? By the silence, that may would suggest that means no. That brings us to uh, Captain James and a law enforcement update. Welcome, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. I won't take much of your time. I really don't have anything for you. Everything's going really good. Uh, the updates you got from Friday night, I'm pretty much going to leave those as he is, other than the uh, he was reopened yesterday by the fire marshal uh, after making a great deal of some of the safety changes that were asked of him. And other than that, right <coughs> now, we're in good shape. Any questions I can answer for you? Uh, you recently had a fundraiser for the Special Olympics. I wonder if you could kind of tell us how that went. At, you know. I know a lot of people when they give, they kind of like to know the results. So We had a torch run, and I sp spoke to you at the last meeting about that. The, that weekend we did the Dunkin' Donuts mm -hmm. on, the, on Old Monroe Road. I'm not sure of what they've raised because this past weekend they did the Dunkin' at Wesley Chapel. So, and then I think the districts are added together. So like Union County Dunkin's will all be added together for the fundraising part for Special Olympics for the month, and then it will be... I guess they tally that at the end of the month. Well, the, that car looked full of stickers, so I think y'all had it. It looked good, good didn't yeah, 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 so I was trying to draw that. pictures on it with the stickers, but it didn't ever work out. Anyway, I, just, I wasn't much of an artiste in school. <laughs> well, that's good you had a good idea. But it did. I appreciate everybody's support, too, that did come out to support it because it, we did really have a good turnout. Any other questions for Captain? Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the consent agenda. If there's no questions, I'll need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move. Oh, did I miss something? No, you did not. Oh, thank you. So moved. Oh, so moved. Oh, so moved. You beat me to before I finished. Mr. Uh, McIntyre's made a motion to approve the consent agenda. A show of hands, all in favor. Let the record show that the consent agenda passes unanimously. Brings us to public hearing for the uh, budget. Mr. McIntyre, I'm Mr. McIntyre. Sorry, Marcus. Mr. Mr. McLaurin. This is the first budget I've done with this council, so what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you, is I'm going to give you an overview. Many of these slides you have seen before, and so I'll go as fast or as slow as you would like me to and then we'll open the public hearing and then you close the public hearing. Our initial plan that we started back in the first part of this year was that we would have the public hearing tonight so we're right on schedule and then schedule the vote, um, your first meeting in June, okay? Um, again, I appreciate everyone's patience as we started this process with setting the goals of the town and then some of the meetings we had and then 
doing the video and, and the budget workshops. I heard a lot of positive feedback on that. Every year, what you will do is you will approve a budget ordinance, and it has a lot of fancy language in it, but it is basically the structure that is used to approve your budget and provide some details on things such as fund transfers and stuff like that. If any of you need a hard copy, I think Kathy has a hard copy, um, and I also have it on the screen. Uh, the budget for this year is $16,660,951. Now, with your budget, your budget is set up in a couple of different ways. You've got your what we call your general fund, and your general fund is your day-to-day -day operation that that pays for the lights and the gas and the cars and employee salaries and things like that. But some employee salaries are paid from a different pot of money. There is also a capital fund, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, part of what this town does, and I think you've made some very wise decisions in doing that, of the 18 and a half cent tax rate, you pre-allocate five cent of the 18 and a half cent to go to a capital reserve fund and for any debt service. And it has served you very well. So you see the, the big picture right up there on expenditures. So the revenues, your town, like a lot of towns in North Carolina and the counties in North Carolina, your largest source of revenue is your property tax both your real property, which is being houses, buildings, things like that, and your personal property, which are vehicles, for example, or boats, or airplanes, or anything of that nature. Your second leading source of revenue is the sales tax. And as we've discussed in North Carolina, there are two ways to distribute the sales tax, and that is done at the county level, and they have to make that decision by April 1st. Half of the counties in North Carolina distribute the sales tax on a population basis, and the other half distributes it on what we call an ad valorem basis. And so that is dependent on your tax rate. For example, we are larger than our neighbors to the southwest in Waxhaw. But their tax rate, they get a higher uh, allocation than we do. We also raise money from beer and wine tax. We also raise money from some of our fees, some of our investment earnings, and things of that nature. And you see those, those pictures right there. We also get a thing called Powell Bill money. Now, Powell Bill money was named for Senator Powell from Columbus County a number of years ago when he sent the legislature on a tour of the state to show them how bad the roads had gotten. And so that money is when you buy a gallon of gas, part of that money goes to the Powell Bill Fund, and that is based, we get our allocation twice a year, and that is based on the number of street miles, town street miles that we maintain, and we can only use those for streets, sidewalks, and things like that. It's what we call restrictive revenue. You also have stormwater utility. That money is based on a stormwater fee that we charge, and it can only be used for stormwater projects. So I'll just skip through these unless someone else wants to, to talk about that. And that is basically your budget ordinance. That, that's what you'll be approving here in a couple weeks. Um, just some of the highlights are unassigned fund balance, and we've talked a lot about fund balance and what that means. And as you know, North Carolina has a very strong oversight on finances of city and county government, and our unrestricted is $17.7 .7 million based on our last audit. Uh, our restricted is somewhere in another $10 million. Our assessed value is $5.65 billion, as you see, and we have some available bond capacity. Now, tonight, in a couple items down the, down the chart here, we're going to ask you about selling a couple street bonds before they expire. Some of those we've already drawn down on, and they're sitting in the bank. The state of North Carolina also limits how much debt a local government can have. It's basically 8% of your assessed value. Our debt is very low. It's only like 2.46%, and the state keeps a close eye on that. So 
if you saw your latest Moody rating, you, you've done a very, very good job. Um, administration, you, you see that there. That covers the various salaries and benefits. Um, we want to implement an internship program. We're trying to negotiate what that price is, but there's no real significant changes. No personnel added in that department. The IT, Abby, does a marvelous job. Earlier this year, you allowed us to increase our AV capability in this room, which is serving us well. And we will do that, assuming you approve this budget, we will do it in the Shirley Howe community room. We're also making sure that our IT components are up to date. We have the latest, greatest security so that hopefully we will not be hit and held hostage. Um, engineering, um, Dalton's old position. If you remember, Dalton moved to South Carolina in the springtime, and we want to change that, reclassify that to a field inspector position so that we have someone that has more boots on the ground on some of these projects that we're working on. Of course, we got $1.2 million in routine street maintenance. Uh, finance, again, they continue to do a great job for you. Um, you see that right there. We say that the audit fee remains flat. Let me step aside and just comment on that. We've agreed that we want to change auditors this year, not because the auditor has done a bad job, but every so often that you, you need to change that. Um, we are hearing that due to Gatsby standards, which is the, the terminology that we use in the public sector, there are a whole lot more requirements, and with the American Rescue Fund money, there's a likelihood that, excuse me, that our fee will go up, but we don't know that just now. Uh, this summer, Jim uh, will be putting out an RFP for auditors, and we will bring that to you in plenty of time. Human resources, right now you're pretty much contributing 5% to a 401k, as you know, under state law since the late 80s. They've had to do it for law enforcement. Um, we've got two employees that, that aren't contributing more than 3%. We recommend that you just bump it up for 5% for everybody for parity. A uh, little bit of change on dependent insurance premiums. I'm pleased to report that our health insurance premiums stayed flat, uh, so employees are trying to stay healthy. Uh, parks and Rec, you see that. Uh, we've got some positions that have uh, been funded but not filled yet. We will be filling that, assuming you approve this budget in 2022, and we're in the process of starting to do a post-COVID transition. Uh, the splash pad is opening. Uh, we've got various activities planned. I know, David, you're interested in seeing fireworks this fall, and we've got that on the on the tap. Uh, you saw an email that I sent to the mayor and CC'd all of you um, about the powwow. And Juneteenth, we are working with the city of Monroe, along with uh, some of the other cities in Union County, to celebrate that. Um, Planning, no additional employees. We do have a couple positions that have been funded but not filled at the present time. And we will be wrapping up our comprehensive land use plan uh, this fall. And we have some um, money set aside for printing, marketing, maps, etc. cetera. Uh, this is probably where we have our biggest change because as the city grows, there are more streets we have to maintain, more rights of way. Uh, they're tied in with stormwater and we've got a solid waste contract coming up next year, and the price of solid <coughs> waste is going up, and it continues to go up. Um, so we are proposing to add two additional personnel uh, beginning in January 2022. Uh, some of that funding will be through Powell Bill and Stormwater, and also our building and grounds crew. Uh, our parks get <coughs> used a lot. And when they get used a lot, we have to do a lot of maintenance on them. And as our parks get older, we have to do maintenance on them. Also, uh, we appreciate you approving a vehicle replacement policy, I think shortly after I got here, so that vehicle replacement, once it reaches a certain criteria, we go ahead and transfer that out of the fleet. So you see that right there. Can I ask a question now? Yes, sir. Um, the, back to the previous slide. Yes, sir. The we are replacing four vehicles within the public works fleet, right? 
That's four vehicles within town government. We don't. Okay, it just falls under public works. Yes, sir. Good okay. question. Are we are we um, putting those out on the auction website if possible? Generally, I know we probably haven't done that before, so we don't know how much we could fetch for them. But is that the process that you expect to do? We will. Yes, sir. What oh. we do is we we get you to declare it as surplus, okay. and then we put it on gov deals or something very just similar. Just like the soccer goals there. And, and as we move forward, at some point, we want to look to see if we can get a grant to do electric charging stations. But we, you know, that's something that I have a personal interest on, not that I own an electric car. I got two employees that do. But this is something that Adam and I have, have talked about because this is the coming thing. All right. Let's see. Where was I? We've got routine equipment that uh, we just need to replace because... In our world, we want that vehicle to start up each and every time. We want that lawnmower to start up each and every time. We want to maintain it well because if we don't, what we run into is downtime. And that's, we're too busy to have downtime. Uh, notice in this slide, uh, the last bullet point I said not included in this request is a generator for town hall. Uh, the impression I got from this board is that y'all would like to see the generator added back in, so we will do that. Uh, Adam and I have also talked about trying to look at doing some highway lighting on US 74, but we don't have any money in there for that. Uh, just kind of a personal comment, 74 is a heavily traveled road, and at night it's, it's in my personal opinion, kind of dangerous, but I'd hate to have a flat tire there. Uh, some of the other things, and you'll see this in the capital improvement plan, is a new public works facility. Um, Council Member Barber has asked us to look at the 11-acre site off Monroe Road, and, and Adam will have a report on that. Uh, the Union County Sheriff's Office, uh, you see that budget figure right there. We're looking at proposing an administrative from two part-time to one full-time. Um, the county will match that with a part-time, so we have 1.5 folks there. Uh, add two patrol deputies and then add one sergeant. The sergeant will supervise the four traffic uh, deputies, and you've seen reports on that and what they're doing, along with the two community deputies. Remind the board that we have 84 HOAs in this town. That's a lot of HOAs. And I can tell you uh, from my personal experience where I live is that that community officer is a very important conduit to the neighborhoods when something goes down, so. Uh, we also, these are the capital improvement programs we have talked about. Um, you see the stormwater projects, these are fully funded. We sh are still showing like $1.9 million uh, for phase two, and I will move through there. The, big, the biggie issue that I wanna talk to you about on this slide right here is the IT Complete Streets. That is gonna be a very important project for this town. Um, and so as we move through that, I strongly recommend the board approach that strategically thinking long-term. This is the, and I'm wrapping up, Mr. Mayor, I'm trying to talk as fast as my voice will let me. Our um, capital investment program summary for 22-23, that's just an overview of those. Some of those are already funded. You see the funding sources coming from there. And what you will do is when you approve your budget here in a couple weeks, we're gonna ask that you approve the budget and approve the CIP for FY22 only. Now the, F, the capital improvement program can be changed and adjusted throughout the year. I promised you that this summer, we will roll out a complete five-year plan so we can start to begin that discussion. And with that, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer. So just for clarity, your CIP is non-binding. It's just a plan. Correct. Essentially. If you Correct. need money spent for whatever project, you will come back for authorization from us, right. declaring the, the source, um, and so on. Right? right, right. I think the budget ordinance kind of goes into some of that language. Just want to make sure, sure that you know people look in will understand that. All right. Anyone else? Todd? And you want us to approve the budget and the capital improvement plan at the same time? They're separate votes. They're going to be separate votes, but it's going to be the same day. 
but we would ask that you do that on June 8th. And, and in between now and June 8th, I think, we want to reach out to you or through this message I'm reaching out to you if, if there are some uh, questions you have or suggestions you have, I would love to hear them so we can try to work through those. I know you and I have had a conversation or two, and uh, but it is non-binding and so. Kind of like more time personally. Mm. So okay, just my suggestion. Mm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. There's no public comments, so I'll close the public comments. And I guess we we'll close the hearing then. Correct. Open it. You got to open the hearing, right? Open, op, op, close yeah. the open, and, open, and then um, there, you, there's two choices. Since you're going to delay the vote till the next meeting, you could continue the public hearing in case there's any citizens who would like to speak um, prior to your vote at the next meeting. But that would be at the um, discretion of council. I, I would support keeping the um, the public comments open until the next budget. That way, if residents do have a question, and that's just me speaking for myself, uh, other council members can chime in, but. In the event anybody in the, in the town, any of the residents have a concern or a question, I think it'll be a good opportunity for them to raise that there. I don't have a problem with that. I agree. You okay with that? Todd? Mike? Yes. You okay with that? Yes? David? All right. Keep the public comments open till the... Uh... June 8th, yeah, so the, we're just gonna continue the public hearing till yes. the June 8th meeting. That we will do, what you said. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Brings us to Old Bank, Truist Bank contract. Mr. Wadowitz. Should I wait for Mr. Cohen to come back? Thank you. Pleasure to be before you. Um, <clears throat> again, after a thorough RFP process we talked about, it was very uh, educational. We have five great banks in the Indian Trail. Um, based on uh, the recommendation we gave you last, we're recommending Truist Bank to stay with them. It's enhanced services, so we're getting a better financial arrangement uh, for the next four years. So I'm happy to report, and I uh, thank you for your support. Well, that was quick. Any questions for Mr. Wadowitz? Yeah, I do. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Cohen. I'd just like to uh, say you do a great job, and thank you for, for doing all you thank do. Thank you. Yeah, we're um, lucky to have you. I'm going to ask the council, please, when we have comments, to raise your hand so I can acknowledge you and not be rude to each other. Thank you. Mr. Yes, McIntyre. Yeah. Um, Mr. Waterwich, you said that it's an agreement for four years? Yes, sir. Is that, some, is that a contract that we're signing with them, or we just have a... Yeah, it's going to be a contract. So if we break that contract, um, would we be fined, or... I mean, um, I'd have to double-check on that. Right, you don't have to. I just okay. was that wondering. All right. Okay. You're good. Okay, there's no other questions. We need a motion to approve Mr. Wadowitz's recommendation. Thank you. Did you have a question? Over. So moved. Okay. <laughs> you make a <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> now you get, now, uh, Mr. Cohen's made the motion. So raise your hand. <laughs> oh, you were pointing. You got me, Marcus. Uh, just, you're just using both hands just to mock me. Sorry, I have both. <laughs> I'm, I didn't want Mr. Cohn's made the motion by show of hands. All in favor. <laughs> that motion carries unanimously. That brings us to American Rescue Plan Fund. Mr. McLaurin, did you get your voice ready again? This is just uh, information, correct? No, sir. Action required. In case you hadn't heard, we're getting some American Rescue money, estimated to be about $11 million, is coming from the state. Don't know exactly when it's going to be here, but it's coming from the state. One of the processes that you will need to do is you will need to have a motion vote to accept that money when it comes in. Right now, we don't have a budget for it. That will come later in the process. So the only thing we're, now if for some reason that money should come in on June 28th, and it's gonna be in two payments we've been told, we would need to have an emergency meeting to do a budget revision just to account for that money. Um, but tonight we would just want you to vote to accept the money. That's all I got. So just accept it tonight, more information to follow. Correct. Thank you. 
Okay, so then we'll just need a motion to accept the 11.6 oh. million dollars for the American Rescue Plan. Uh, and Mr. Morris has a smile on his face. That doesn't happen very often. That's right. Um, <laughs> I'll make a motion to take that money. <laughs> Mr. Morris has made the motion to accept the 11.6 million dollars. 11.7, please. 11.7. Let's Thank be you. specific. That's what I was looking for. I didn't. I couldn't read you that. Didn't raise your hand, Mark. I was not. Oh, I was, I'm sorry. No, you have... no that's fine because I was looking at him when he did that. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't even look down. I, the smile smacked me in the face. Uh, <laughs> by a show of hands, I need a motion uh, to accept. I mean, see what you did to me, Jerry? Mm. <laughs> Let the record stand. Mr. Mr. Morris made the motion to accept, and the council agrees unanimously. Uh, okay. That brings us to authorization to sell. Now, here goes. Here goes. Now, you're putting us into debt. Go ahead. Okay, Mr. ready? Brown. A few moments ago, I told you when we did the public hearing for the budget that they had some bonds I'm going to ask that you consider drawing down. If you remember, you approved those back in 2011. You got one extension, and your extension's expiring in November, and it takes about three months to sell those. Um, we've had various discussions with with folks, and our recommendation is that we draw down not all of the old Monroe Road bonds, but, um, let's see, four million. four million, thank you, four million of old Monroe Road bonds and two and the 2.5 million of the General Street bonds, okay? We, we don't know when Monroe Road's going to be done, but we need to go ahead and do it. Now, I mentioned earlier about the state control over our finances, and the LGC just won't let us do this on our own. We have to go through them, and they sell those bonds on Tuesday, and I think they generally do one sale uh, a, month, a week or something like that, and it has to go through the LGC board for authorization. They recommend strongly that we also hire bond counsel and that we hire a financial advisor, okay? And that falls under the manager, and we're gonna uh, hire Parker Poe. Parker Poe worked with you last time on this. We're also gonna hire DEC Associates, okay? Stands for Doug Carter. Now, I've known Doug. I met him in graduate school back in the 80s. He used to work for the state treasurer, then he was Charlotte's finance manager and he's had his own shop for probably 20 years now. LGC gave him high marks. We met with him. His fee was the lowest of the two we looked at. He gave us a list of cities that he does work in from small towns like Holden Beach to large cities like the city of Charlotte. All the background calls that we made gave him high marks and his fee I think is less than half of what you paid last time. So if I can get a decision on what you want to do with the bonds, we'll move on. Any questions, Marcus? Mike? David? Jerry? Todd? Okay, then we need a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve drawing down $4 million of the old Monroe Road bonds. And I'd also like to make uh, you do we do them one at a time? One at a time, please. One at okay. a time. All right. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to draw down $4 million from the old Monroe bond money. By show of hands, all in favor? Let's let the record show that was unanimous. Mr. McIntyre? I'll make a motion to approve drawing down $2.5 million off the General Street bond. Mr. Mark. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to draw down $2 million of the general street bond. I think it was 2.5. Was it 2.5? 2.5. 2.5. It's those little numbers that'll get you every time. Mm -hmm. 2.5 million, are you agreeing? Yes, 2.5 okay. million. Okay. I can state it again if you need for the record. Okay, of State it again? No, you that's fine. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve drawing down 2.5 million of the general street bond. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to draw down $2.5 million of the general street bond by show of hands. All in favor? The record showed that also was unanimous. Mr. Kramer, you're up. Grand Marshal Review and Selection.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we are going to have a July 3rd parade this year, so mark your calendars. Uh, please feel free to push it out via social media and anyone else that you talk with. Uh, registration is going well. We're actually a little bit ahead of schedule comparably to what we were in 19 and 18 and 17. Um, part of the July uh, parade is a grand marshal. Uh, so with the policy that we reviewed and, and uh, accepted earlier this year, uh, the Lions Club has submitted some nominations. I uh, come before you this evening to provide you those nominations. Um, they did it a little differently with kind of ranking them. Uh, again, it's never an easy task, and I think any of these names are, are fantastic names. So even if you're not selected, I think, again, it's just... Uh, those folks are being recognized for their work in the community. Uh, so I'll list the three names. Uh, again, all familiar to you. Uh, Gracie Laney, uh, don't need an introduction, just look behind me. Uh, Jeff Rogers, uh, director of the community shelter, and David Williams, um, Indian Trail citizen, uh, as well as a county commissioner. Uh, again, based on what the Lions Club submitted, uh, the, the first name, Gracie Laney, uh, was their preference. Uh, again, council has the opportunity to digest this, uh, discuss it amongst you, uh, and then select a grand marshal. Typically, we do this in another fashion, but because we made the decision for the parade late, what we're asking is that discussion um, happen this evening and a selection happen this evening so we can move forward with press releases and, and other things that, that we have to do. Yes, sir. I can make a motion to uh, yeah. Gracie Laney to be our grand marshal. He raised his hand. Huh? He raised his hand. He raised his pen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. Him. I don't even have a pen. I have. Did, did somebody else get <laughs> any other any conversation? He made the motion. Any conversation? Any so Baba, I'd like to hear your thoughts, sir. Todd, I'm sorry. I'm not going to say anything. I, I, I chose the name. <laughs> <laughs> Cats over the bag. Cats over the bag. I'm going to let y'all decide, okay? okay? All right, well, <laughs> if, there's no, if there's no further discussion, Mr. Cohn has made the motion to have Grace Laney be our Grand Marshal of our Fourth of July parade. By show of hands, all in favor. Let the records show that that's unanimous. And it's co coincidental that you're here. You will contact Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy, you'll be in touch with her? I'll be in touch with her. Thank you. Very much. Ashley, you'll answer your phone? <laughs> you'll answer the phone when she calls? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Grace. Thank you. That brings us to feasibility of using town owned 11 acres for a public works facility. Mr. McLam. Hey, Adam, how you doing? Y'all are making record time tonight, so. Don't slow us down. Uh, so we'll try not to. So uh, really quick, so we were asked by council to look at the existing 11-acre parcel that the town owns on Old Monroe Road. It's actually several parcels that we own that add up to roughly 11 acres. Um, so we've gone through some evaluation. We looked at those parcels. We looked at different criteria that you know we could follow for this parcel and other parcels in the future that we may have to look at. So uh, general location in between Brandon Oaks Parkway, Mustang Drive, almost dead in the middle of the two. There's a map in just a second, but that's generally where we're at. So there you go. The outlined in that teal blue color right in here. So you have one parcel, two parcels, three parcels. So this is not far from the proposed ABC store yep. fun Matthew. So fun the Center. proposed ABC store is right. Oh, sorry. Y'all can't see this on your screen. It's about right here. David, if you turn around, am I right? About right there. Isn't that the yeah, ABC that, store? Yeah, right there. Because the Matthews Fun Center, or Matthew, geez. You got the bowling the, alley going yeah, there. Yeah, it's right here. The, the Fun Center's right, right there. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So can I ask another question? Sorry. Sure. No, you got it. You already got the floor. <laughs> Put the hand up. Sorry. <laughs> um, the, the cleared land that I see there, what's going there? Housing? Yep. So this uh, land right here is where the townhouses are being built at right now. I do not know the name of that. Sagecroft. Oh, Sagecroft. There you go. So that's multifamily is what this is zoned. All right. So uh, you can go ahead. I just wanted to 
Thank you. Okay, and just so you can kind of get an idea of where, what you're looking at, so obviously this is Sun Valley. This is part of Brandon Oaks. This is the rest of Brandon Oaks as it wraps around this area. So we looked at a couple of criteria. These are, are some of those. So we looked at, you know, what's the existing zoning of the parcel? Can it be rezoned? Uh, what's around the parcel? Trying to kind of figure out, you know, what, if we rezone it, what's around, you know, is it, you know, grandma's living room or is it, you know, Sun Valley, you know, area? Um, is the site developable? Meaning, of the land, can we develop what is there for the use that we are looking to use for it? Are there existing right-of-ways or other limitations on the parcel? If we knew any environmental hazards, keep going down the, la the list, water and sewer available, and are there adjacent par parcels available for purchase that we know of right now? So, after going through that process, this is roughly what we, or this is what we came up with um, after looking through it. I did not put up kind of our comments based on this because it gets kind of busy, but I can go through some of those. So the existing parcel is zoned uh, multifamily. The existing parcels are because that multifamily is right beside them. For a facility for public works, we would need it zoned at least light industrial and really probably heavy industrial because we will have outdoor storage. Um, so could the parcel be rezoned? We can, you know, with council's approval, we can rezone things. Um, have to go through planning board and make planning happy back there in the back of the room, but we, you know, that's, pars that's possible. Um, so uh, as we know, as I know right now, I don't think the parcel has ever been rezoned in the past. So all that would be, you know, we'd be able to do those things. Um, some of the bigger things that we can look at is, is the full property fully developable? So I'm gonna go ahead to the next slide and then we'll come back to this one. So if you look at this map now, you've got a few more colors on the map. The orange is an existing right of way that runs used to be for a roadway. A couple of years ago, if you remember, that's Faith Church Road Extension. We took the roadway component away from that, but we left the right-of-way available for trails or connections or multimodal connections away from roadways because of how it cut through the neighborhood. There's floodplain, there's streams. It just doesn't, didn't make sense for us to keep it for that, so we took that designation away. But what you see there now in that purplish color that is unusable land from a building standpoint. I'm going to get to another to why I say from a building standpoint. There, it's either a floodplain or it's a Duke Power right of way. So there's high power Duke Power lines that run through there. So that's why that area is undevelopable. What that leaves us with from a facility standpoint, it leaves us with about three acres at this top portion and about two acres at this bottom portion that's available to build a facility on. So if you go back to originally, what we're thinking is somewhere around 10 acres that allows us to build for now and grow into the future. We're, we're not in the same ballpark anymore. We went from 11 acres to now we're at about five acres for a facility purpose. So we'll go back. Hey, Mayor, you have a question? Oh, go ahead. Um, He's got the floor. You can ask you, him the can question. Can you go back to the... Sure. So if I'm looking at the clearing, it looks like somebody's clearing all the land then. So actually what you're seeing here is I pulled a Google Earth, you know, picture. This is... They used to farm this land. All the land. Town's land. So yeah. at one time no, somebody... Don't, don't, did, don't, down yeah. here, at yeah. some point, at some time it was. I don't know how old this picture is that I pulled. Like it could be before the town was given this property because there was a big lawsuit that went with this property in Sagecroft and I don't know all the details of that. Okay. So. I know I didn't quite answer your question, but I kind of answered it. <laughs> You're a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've just stood up here quite a few times. Um, the other thing that I'll say is while the parcel is not that great from a public works perspective for a facility, 
it is still valuable to the town. It could be used for parkland. It could be used, I mean, y'all could choose to sell it to somebody if they came to you and wanted to buy the parcel because to a, you know, a developer, it could be used for different things at different places. It could just be used for open green space just to have you know, a green piece of property in the town in the future. I'm trying to look at my notes while y'all kind of think of more questions and make sure I didn't miss anything. Well, well I don't, I want to ask a question. Sure. May yep. I, may I? <laughs> He's got the floor. That's, he calls on you. Okay. Um, you've already said you need 10 acres and you only have five acres. So, I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, why, I mean, why are we still talking about yep. it? If, 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 so we, if this is what we're still, if that's what we need and, that, and we don't have it half of it, then because it was property that the town owned, it was the biggest piece of property that the town owned that didn't already have something built on it. Well, I From, understand. I understand that, but we didn't realize too that you couldn't exactly. Use, so you couldn't we, use half we of kind it, of right? on the top end dropped off from the ability to for us to be able to use it. But we did have to go through a process, so it was a good process. It actually got us some criteria now, so when we look at other properties, we can try and compare <coughs> apples to apples the and, best and, we and can. Another thing too. Um, I don't know what can be built on it. You know, it's not very far from Monroe Road. Mm -hmm. And um, I know how much land costs on yep. Monroe Road. It, it, I mean, could you, you know, if you could build a, you know, somebody could sell it. Yep. I, I know what the, uh, I know I know what a, a lot there to put about an acre and a half is about $750,000. So I'll tell you, uh, one of the problems that makes it hard for a public works facility is you, if you actually look at it, it has no frontage on Old Monroe Road. So we'd have to get access through, which the Sagecroft development did build like they needed to. We could tie on to that frontage road that they kind of built for their property to get off the property, but it, we don't have access straight on the road. Is that who owns the lot in front of it? Is Sagecroft or the, is that? Yeah. I, I can speak to that to some degree. I think if I could suggest to the to the council is, Maybe where the discussion needs to go is we don't want to use this property for a public works facility. And I can talk a little bit more in a global sense about park and rec under the manager's update. But with the consent of the council, I want to share with you a little bit about the access issue and my, one of the solutions that might be out there. So you are talking about from a public works standpoint? The access issue you're talking about uh, is from a public work standpoint? Not necessarily, no, okay, sir. Because uh, to, we still don't have enough. Yeah, that, to, that's, to David's yeah, point, that's exactly. Max's point, which is, yeah. I mean, we don't have to beat the dead horse, man. It's, yeah. it's dead. Yeah. We, can't, we can't put a building on there. There's no frontage. I mean, I would say let's just, speaking for me, not, not you guys, but speaking for me, I'd say let's just move on to the next thing because there's no reason to belabor that point anymore. Yeah, I mean, just I'm good. We could close this discussion and bring it to a, uh, if you would, for better for the council, just come back at another meeting on the agenda, just put the land on there and say, look, these are actually have a prepared, these are possible uses for the town to discuss and the obstacles to overcome. We'd we'll just to, not just shoot at the hip tonight. Yeah, let me make one. Well, that, would, that would be my question is if it's not suitable for the public's worst 10 acre wish list, then, um, you know, do we sit on the land, let it increase in value, or do we look at what it is good for or, and, and and decide if we want to put it to use? I mean, where it's at, it's obviously going to increase in value. So, I mean, I guess from a town manager standpoint, that's the feedback I would be looking for. If it's not on your, you know, if it doesn't fit your 10 acre wish list for public works, and, you know, I don't know, I mean, what public works is behind the building over here? Not even on an acre, so right. <laughs> they, uh, you know, so then you want ten acres, so it's kind of a big increase, but you know, but if that don't fit your wish list, then you know, I, I, and if we don't have access to Old Monroe Road, then yeah, I guess I don't know about anybody else, but I'd be interested to know, you know, did we sit on it or was it good for? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think. I don't think that's what we're discussing, though. No, that's, that's, that's off that's topic later, tonight. That's a later discussion. I think that's, that's fine. Uh, you know. I, I want to mention, I want to make one comment that will tie into that larger discussion that we can have with the council. And I'm going to ask Todd Hunsinger to make sure that I'm right. We've got a developer that's wanting to develop, I think, this property right here. Is that correct, Todd? Yes, sir. 
And one of the problems, because of the size of his development, or her development as the case may be, they have to have a second entrance, and they don't have that. Mm -hmm. They would be interested, as I understand, in talking to the town to see if we would give them a right-of-way through our property, which they would then tie into this neighborhood over here. So obviously that's, as we start to look at that discussion about what to do with the land, we at least need to have a feel as to whether we're interested in giving them a right-of-way. And if so, certainly one of the minimum criteria would be they would have to build a road to our specification. But, you know, that's going to be something that y'all need to talk about. We'll be happy to schedule probably a closed session to talk about that. Please, please do. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's all I got on that. We're good. Are we down to manager's report, sir? That's what I think is up next. I think okay. I lost my agenda. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Thank you, Adam. Oh, all right. Just several items here. Since you had a memo, I think it was this morning, um, and again, we're not asking for a decision on this right now, but we would ask you to, to look at this at your next meeting. Because of COVID, um, we've had some reduction in park and rec revenue. We all know that, and, but probably most impact has been on the type of services and expenditures. Uh, met with Hayden and Jim the other day. Hayden says, hey, I've got this money here. We've got these needs out here. What do you think about trying to do a budget amendment to maybe reallocate some of this money in the two parks or at least Crooked Creek so we don't, you know, impact the bond sales that are already driven? And this was the list he came up with. Um, I can comment on this list if you like, or else I can give it to you for information and say that come June 8th, we're going to ask how you would like to see that money distributed, if you would like to see it distributed at all. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions outside this meeting between now and your first meeting in June, please, you know, let me know early and often. Does anybody need a copy of my memo? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize, Jerry. I was looking for it, but I didn't know where you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> Don't be. Everybody did get the email, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so All right. I got this. I'm sorry. Okay. Second bullet on that list is we have talked about opportunities to expand the use of Crooked Creek and Chestnut Square. We, we know about the wetlands issue. We know about the desires for soccer fields and fishing ponds, and we know that we have spoke to someone about expansion, and that's not in the cards right now. So we've asked Land Design to come out, take a look at it, you know, give us a proposal on what we can do in that park. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Land Design, but they are simply the best. They, they have been in business for a number of years. They have offices all over the country. But um, they do quality work. Uh, they worked with the county on their latest park and rec master plan. A number of these parks around Mint Hill, some of the other surrounding towns, they were behind it. Um, so once we get that proposal, we'll, we'll take a look at that. In the event that there are not uh, development opportunities, we'll need to look at trying to get some more land for parks. Um, and I'll stop there unless there's any questions. I do have one. Yes, sir. The um, 182 is from this year's budget that we just, talking about the parks and recs, the 182K. That is from the current year's budget. Current year's Correct. budget. We yes, just sir. want to reallocate those to these items yes. there. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. All right. You asked me about the American Rescue Plan, and we attended a webinar. And in the memo, you will see the seven categories that they've got. We have to obligate the money by 2024, and we have to spend it by 2026. Now, 
if you look at those seven categories, we had a discussion afterwards, and some of the things you don't have on your memo that I'll run through very quickly that we think the money may qualify for subject to confirmation is covering the cost of your public safety workers, maybe partnering on some water and sewer issues, for example. Um, they don't have money in there for streets, but if you have to replace a water or sewer line, then the argument can be made you, you can pay for some of that cost to repave the streets. To um, building, um, we may be able to use some of this money for doing our building to make sure that the air quality is as good as it can be. Um, working with nonprofits, promoting economic development, maybe some downtown revitalization, um, assisting folks who have lost jobs, et cetera. So where we are right now is we just got this information in the last few days. Staff and I will be meeting over the next couple weeks and trying to come up with a basic sketch idea of what we think the council may be interested in, and at the appropriate time, we'll bring it back to you for your, for your decision. I'll be happy to answer any questions. This one, when, when did the money have to be spent by? Was that 24? 26. Uh, 26. 26. And 11 million dollars is a lot of money, but if we use it, for example, if we could use it to start to replace some old water and sewer lines, that would go pretty quick. You know, if you could do it on your downtown revitalization, um, that could be some good things too. Uh, several of you have asked me where we are with the water and wastewater agreement with the county. Um, yesterday, we got the county's comments back. We are meeting Thursday uh, with the towns and the county to kind of walk through that. I'm optimistic that we will, we will come up with an agreement. Uh, right now, we are not at the stage of talking about allocated capacities or stuff like that. Uh, I'm sorry it's not moving any faster. We turn our comments around pretty quick, and um, I will keep you in the loop. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, you know, feel free to pick up the phone, call me, come by to see me, and I'll tell you everything I know about it. Memorial Day, Monday, 11 a.m., Veterans Gardens, right out front. Hope you'll be there. Uh, I will be there. And uh, if you're attending, that would be great. The last thing, it's not on my memo, was a couple months ago, and I want to thank Marcus. Marcus called and told me about this magazine. You remember that call? And uh, you did a great interview. The mayor did a great interview. We bought an ad in the magazine. Uh, this goes out far and wide, and we're in the county section. And so one of the things we want to do with our economic development effort is to get our name out there to people that are looking to locate here. So I want to thank you and you for taking time out and um, for doing that. Marcus, thanks for introducing me to this guy. We also have an ad. I have a copy of the magazine for each of you. And I think the Union County section starts on page 40. That's all I've got. Karen, you're up. Don't charge us for the time that you're um, fumbling through your paper. Just do it randomly. I'll go first. Marcus will go. I'll go first. Right. Marcus. I have no comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go. Mr. Morris, work our way in. Well, normally I would not have any comments, but I, I did want to thank uh, Ms. Rogers for coming in and bringing that to the attention of the council and the staff. Regarding that tree, um, I'm sure the, the town will, will, will do what we can. Uh, Thank you. And, um, and as far as Mr. Chang, I've known Roberta for, for many, many years, and um, I'm happy for her retiring. I, wanted, I was hoping Patrick would stick around at least to pass on the message of a job well done to Roberta. I really like that lady. Um, and then uh, this past weekend, I was uh, Saturday. Um, I was out doing some chores, and uh, unfortunately, uh, there was an accident right there on Unionville Indian Trail Road at Plyler. And to the point that was being made earlier, um, I did see the deputies that they were on site within two minutes. And then um, 
but I did see the deputy struggling to communicate with the Spanish speaking people that were involved in the wreck and they were looking um, looking for somebody to help you know interpret so you know maybe that's something that um, that the town possibly should be looking at is a um, you know dual language employees perhaps I'm not sure how that works out but that would have been something really convenient for the for the deputy um, that was out there at the at that scene and um, but I'm as far as um, hiring decisions and whatnot, I'll defer to the town manager on that. Y'all have a great night. Thanks. Mr. Head. Ditto. Mr. Barber. Thank you. Um, yeah, I want to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day and thanks to all those that served and gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Uh, I do want to thank and congratulate Pam Good on the Public Works Employee of the Year. Uh, Congratulations to her, uh, great job. And also I wanna thank uh, Troop 276 is having a Super Eagle banquet next week and the town is giving all of them an award of recognition. And uh, so I wanna thank the eight Eagle Scouts, congratulate them, it's Cole Fornes, Stephen Sagaz, Andrew Stewart, Joseph Hartman, Walker Hudson, David Voss, Aaron Ross Fortson, and Nicholas Spector. So congratulations to those young gentlemen. Uh, they all have to do an Eagle project and those Eagle projects greatly enhance our town and anything from a trail to a flagpole, they do all kinds of great stuff. Anyway, so congratulations to those young men and everybody have a blessed evening. Thank you. Mr. Cohn. Yes. Um, I'd like to first congratulate my good buddy Phil Mickelson this weekend for winning the, uh, the PGA Championship. Uh, if you saw it on TV, uh, it was fantastic. And, um, anyway, I called to congratulate him, but he didn't answer the phone, so <laughs> anyway, it didn't matter. But anyway, no. Um, also, this weekend, I was um, want to say that I'm sorry that I missed the sh dedication to the Shirley Howell room downstairs. Shirley's very special to this town and um, I'd like to just read what I had, had written for her uh, because I, I do think the town is, is uh, very blessed to have uh, Shirley as uh, we, we had had her. Uh, I wrote, uh, what a great day that we can celebrate dedicating a room to someone who did so much for our town. Shirley not only lived in Indian Trail but loved her town in a way that only Shirley could. She enriched our lives by working so hard to make our town a better place to live, work, and play. The room will always be a reminder of what a true leader is and should be. She led by example and made our town and world a better place. It was an honor to serve on council with her, an even bigger honor to call her friend. Shirley, you are missed but never forgotten. This, this room of remembrance is the town's way of saying thank you for your unselfish love, your unforgettable great spirit, and again, making our town a better place. What a great honor for our town hall to have a room named the Shirley Howe Room. And uh, what a great person she was, and we're always going to remember her. Thank you, Shirley. Mr. Mayor. Excuse me. <clears throat> First, I want to thank Hayden for putting together the Memorial Day ceremony uh, with a lot of restrictions being lifted for COVID. Hayden had to work at super light speed to make all these events coming up happen within this year, this being our first one. And you are invaluable to us, Hayden, and thank you for working on such short notice again with the city of Mon Monroe to make sure that the Juneteenth, the first annual Juneteenth celebration takes place and sets the bar real high for future celebrations on that day. Um, now, I don't think many of us realize how hard Hayden's had to work just to make all of this happen so quickly. Thank you, Hayden. And uh, congratulations, Grace, for being the Grand Marshal. Um, have fun leading the parade. And uh, Sandbox, what you do is, uh, there's no words. No words to even describe it. And we're blessed in this community and around this county and even this nation to have
people like you set the example of selfless giving to others when they're at their worst and they need a hand up and a hug and a steady hand to help them walk in faith. Which goes to my council here. Thank you for being there for me over the last year and a half with your jokes. Marcus, you've really kept my spirits up. You've kept me smiling, laughing, called me on the mornings of chemo and uh, checked on me knowing when my, you knew my schedule better than I did. I should have hired you. Um, Mike, your kind words will always resonate at the end of the year. That was very, whether you realize it or not, very touching. David, your friendship over the last decade has been an amazing friend and a blessing to my life. You know retiring, right? Um, what? You know retiring. You sound <laughs> no, like I'm not going anywhere, but this is a, this is a good like time because it's been a year. And Jerry, <laughs> thanks for the, being there and caring too. And Todd, your dumb jokes, they don't make me laugh, but I laugh at them anyway because you remind me, you remind oh, me of my dad. Uh, <laughs> You know, just in case you didn't know, my last scans have uh, showed that everything's reducing to pretty much to the point where pretty soon they won't be able to see anything. And hopefully we'll get to that point and uh, I can continue to be a uh, pain in your arms. Uh, so thank you. Um, I, yeah, well, I'll have two by that time. I'll make sure certain fingers are working for you, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> now just, you know, honestly, you're not just uh, neighbors and council members, you've all near and dear to my heart. You're good leaders for this community. You've kept our budget at, our, at, a, at its peak. Can't staff, they're no good without you. And we, you only make us look good. Kevin, thank you for what you do. Kathy, you've always got my back. Thank you. Karen, thanks for putting up with me. Abby, you too. Brandy, everybody. Let's uh, go into our next, next fiscal year doing that much better. And uh, let everybody go. I'm going to say God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Please be there at the Memorial Day ceremony and remember what that day is truly about. Those that gave their lives for this country and their families who also gave a life as they moved on. So, Council, on that note, I need a motion to adjourn so before moved. it gets dark. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion. So moved. I show hands. All in favor. Everybody have a great night. <laughs>